Hello everyone, today we have a new lesson about Introduction to ICT. ICT or Information and Communication Technology. It deals with the use of different communication technologies such as mobile phones, telephone, internet to locate, save, send, and add information. It is a study of computers as data processing tools. It introduces students to the fundamental of using computer systems in an internet environment. ICT in the Philippines. Philippines is dubbed as the ICT hub of Asia because of huge growth of ICT related jobs, one of which is BPO, Business Process Outsourcing, or call centers. ICT Department to the Philippines is responsible for the planning, development, and promotion of the country's information and communications technology or ICT agenda in support of national development. Computer is an electronic device for storing and processing data typically in binary form according to instructions given to it in a variable program. The Internet is the global system of interconnected computer networks that use the Internet Protocol Suite, or TCIPIP, to link billions of devices worldwide. Means of connecting a computer to any other computer anywhere in the world via dedicated routers and servers. Internet, sometimes called simply the net, is a worldwide system of computer networks, a network of networks in which the users at any one computer can get information from any other computer. World Wide Web is an information system on the internet that allows documents to be connected to other documents by hypertext links, enabling the user to search for information by moving from one document to another. It is an information space where documents and other web resources are identified by URL interlinked by hypertext things and can be accessed via the internet. World Wide Web is invent was invented by Tim Berners-Lee. Web page is a hypertext document connected to the World Wide Web. It is a document that is suitable for the World Wide Web. Let's proceed to the different online platforms of World Wide Web. So the different online platforms of World Wide Web are, for example, the Web 1.0. It refers to the first stage in the World Wide Web, which was entirely made up of the web pages connected by hyperlinks. Then the Web 2.0 is the evolution of 1.0 by adding dynamic pages. The user is able to see a website differently than others. Web 2.0 also allows users to interact with the page instead of just reading the page. The user may be able to comment or create user account. Then the Web 3.0. This platform is all about semantic web. It aims to have machines or servers understand the user's preferences to be able to deliver web content. Static web page is known as a flat page or stationary page in the sense that the page is as is and cannot be manipulated by the user. The content is also the same for all users that is referred to as Web 1.0. Then the, the dynamic web pages or the Web 2.0 is the evolution of Web 1.0 by adding dynamic web pages. The user is able to see a website differently than others like social networking sites, sites or wikis, 
video sharing sites. So there's a, some features of Web 2.0. First is the taxonomy, wherein it allows user to categorize and classify information using freely chosen keywords like tagging by FB, Twitter, use tags that start with a sign, sharp referred to as hashtag. Next feature is the rich user experience. Content is dynamic and is responsive to users' input. Another is user participation. The owner of the website is not the only one who is able to put content. Others are able to place a content of their own by means of comments, reviews, and evaluation like Lazada or Amazon. Long tail. It's services that are offered on demand rather than on a one-time purchase. This is synonymous to subscribing to a data plan that charges you for the amount of time you spend in the internet. Another is the software as a services, wherein users will be subscribed to software only when needed rather than purchasing them as the Google Docs, which yeah. used to create and edit word processing and spreadsheet. Next, the mass participation, diverse information sharing through universal web access. Web 2.0 Content is based on people from various cultures. Let's talk about trends in ICT. First, the convergence. Convergence is the synergy of technological advancements to work on a similar goal or task. For example, Besides your, using your personal computer to create Word documents, you can now use your smartphone. Another trend is the social media. It is a website, application, or online channel that enables web users, web users to create, co-create, discuss, modify, and exchange user-generated content. Next is the mobile technologies. The popularity of smartphones and tablets has taken a major rise over the years. This is largely because of the device's capability to do the tasks that were originally found in pieces. Several of these devices are capable of using a high-speed internet. To date, the latest model devices use 4G networking or LTE, which is currently the fastest. Next is Assistive Media. It is a non-profit service designed to help people who have visual and reading impairments. A database of audio recordings is used to read to the user. Another trends in ICT are the Yahoo, Gmail, Hotmail, or Cloud Computing, Distributed Computing on Internet, or Delivery of Computing Service over the Internet. Instead of running an email program on your computer, you log into a web email account remotely. The software and storage for your account doesn't exist on your computer. It's on the services computer cloud. It has three components, the client computers, distributed servers, and data centers. Client computers or in clients are the device that the end user interact with cloud. The distributed service servers, often servers are in geographically different places but server acts as if they are working next to each other. While the data centers, it is collection of servers where application is placed and is accessed via internet. Let's proceed to the six types of social media. First type of social media is social networks. 
these are sites that allows you to connect with other people with the same interests or background. Once the user creates his or her account, he or she can set up a profile, add people, share content, and so on. So example of social networks are Facebook and Google+. Plus. Next type is the bookmarking site. Sites that allow you to store and manage links to various websites and resources. Most of the sites allow you to create a tag to others. So our examples are StumbleUpon and Pinterest. Another is the social news. Sites that allow users to post their own news items or links to other news sources. The users can also comment on the post and comments may also be run. Example, Reddit and D. Media sharing, sites that allow you to upload and share media content like images, music, and video. For example, Flickr, YouTube, and Instagram. Another type is the microblogging that focus on short updates from the user. Those that subscribe to the user will be able to receive these updates. Examples are Twitter and Flirt. Another type of social media are the blogs and forums, wherein allow users to post their content. Other users are able to comment on the said topic. Examples? Blogger, WordPress, and Tumblr. So, how about the mobile OS? Samples of mobile OS are the following. iOS. Used in Apple devices such as iPhone and iPad. Next, Android. An open source OS developed by Google. Being open source means mobile phone companies use this OS for free. Next is the BlackBerry OS, where it's used in BlackBerry devices. Another is Windows Phone OS, a closed source and proprietary operating system developed by Microsoft. Next, the Symbian. The original smartphone OS used by Nokia devices. Web OS. Originally used in smartphone, now in smart TVs. And Windows Mobile, developed by Microsoft for smartphones and packet PCs. What are the types of clouds? Types of clouds are the following. First, the public cloud that allows systems and services to be easily accessible to the general public. Public cloud may be less secure because of its openness like email. Another type is the private cloud that allows systems and services to be accessible within an organization. It offers increased security because of its private nature. Next, the community cloud allows systems and services to be accessible by a group of organizations. Then the hybrid cloud, it is a mixture of public and private cloud. However, the critical activities are performed using private cloud, while the non-critical activities are performed using public cloud. So that's our further discussion about the introduction to ICT. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.